time to get to know the hottest DJ in town. Hey, DJ Buddha. Hey, Karish. This is my first podcast. You've done your masters. You hold down a banking job. Yeah. And then you're a DJ. Yeah. I used to collect cassettes and records back in the school days. They say that half knowledge is equal to no knowledge at all. If uncle hadn't asked, I would have continued my engineering during that whole period of getting married and engaged. She had absolutely no idea that I was passionate about being a DJ. I came home, the doors were locked. She didn't open the door for me. I was sitting outside till 7 in the morning. That's when they got up. That's when they opened the door. I went in, I changed, I got ready and went to work directly. I was like very heartbroken. I was like, no, I don't want to continue. This is very difficult. You're not so cool. And DJs are typically the coolest people in the room. But there are people like me who don't like to be that cool. DJ Mihir. DJ Mihir. <laughs>
And then down the line, after I think about a year or so, there was a workshop which happened, which was announced by uh, one of the leading brands, Pioneer, which are the manufacturers of the DJ equipment. Right. They said, we are conducting a workshop. And um, so that's when I joined them. I learned the technical side of it. It was about for three months. And um, 2010 is when I did my first gig. All of this happened right here in Dubai? Right here in Dubai, very much in Dubai. Where did you come from? So I am born in Gujarat. I've done my schooling in Gujarat. And uh, I've done my college in uh, Bombay. I've stayed in Bombay for four years. Which uh, college did you go to? National College, Bandra. That's very close to, by the way, I'm from Linking Road. So I I grew up in Khar. National College was just a stone's throw away. Absolutely. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. So, so National College and then you've had National College Wala Sandwich and Vada Pao and all of that. The the uh, the Shajwan yes. noodles. Oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> Reel it in. <laughs> all right. So uh, what brought you here to Dubai? Actually, um, I landed up. So my, my, my extended family is, right, is here in Dubai, right? Um, and we have been in a joint family since my dad was born. Hmm. My uncle and aunt, they're based in Dubai and they've been in Dubai since 40 years. And um, that was my first visit in 2005. I landed here exactly on my birthday, 16 June, 2005. How old were you then? Um, I was 23 when I landed here. And um, it was a, I, I was on a visit visa. I was here for only three months because I was doing my graduation there. And uh, at the end of three months, the, uh, the day I was supposed to fly out, my flight is in the evening. And my uncle says, do you really want to go back? I was like, no, but if, even if I stay back, what am I going to do here? You know, my, I have not still graduated. I said, we'll figure it out. The moment he said that we'll figure it out, you're staying back. I was so happy because deep down, I wanted to stay here as well. That's it. It was just one random, if uncle hadn't asked, you would have I would have gone back. sat on the plane, <laughs> flown back home. I would have gone back. I would have continued my engineering. So that was the plan. You were going to do engineering and then what were you supposed to do? I had no plans as such. I had absolutely no plans. Like uh, the only thing that I wanted to do that point of time was to complete my graduation. I stayed back and um, within two months, I got the job offer to join the bank where Mm. I'm working currently as well. Since then, it's been 18 years with the bank. Wow, same bank? Same bank. So what did you study then? Here, did you study anything? I've completed my graduation as well as my master's. You're a graduate, you've done your master's, you hold down a banking job. Yeah. And then you're a DJ. Yeah. There are three more things that you're missing out. Which are? DJ by passion, uh, banker by profession, married. I have two kids. I host my own show on City 1016. Um, I also teach about event management at one of the universities in Dubai. And there's been a recent addition, which is um, I had the events team at one of the companies in Dubai. Nice. So I'm most interested now in trying to understand from a DJ who's, you know, you've been doing this for very long. How one do you reconcile being a DJ with being a married man? Uh, Because (laughs) therein, I think, lies a big, big dilemma uh, with your night outs and, you know, your travels and your gigs and all of that. And of course, I also want to understand, uh, you know, was the family all right with this? Why are you holding down two different professions at the same time? Why are you not just fully switching to one this is These are the things that I want to hopefully understand today from our conversation. Mine is an arranged marriage. We got introduced through um, a matrimonial service. We were chatting on, on that. Back then it was uh, G-Talk. There was no WhatsApp. There was no nothing. Right. G-Talk, we were chatting. Then we spoke on the phone and one suddenly I was returning back from my college. I was doing my master's. I was like, I'm going to come down and meet you. So I booked my flight. Next morning, I was in Bombay. We met for a week. We were engaged and we got married, right? At that point of time, during that whole period of uh, getting married and engaged, she had absolutely no idea that I was passionate about being a DJ or I had done my course as a DJ as well. I've got all the equipments at home. I had got my DJ console at home. I have my speakers at home, but they were all shelved. So probably about six months down the line when she was digging up things in my cupboard, she's like, what is this? Uh, you know, why do you have this? That's when I told her that, you know, this is what I've learned. This is what I'm passionate about. So what are you going to do about it? She asked me. So at one point of time, I was really passionate and I was thinking that I'm going to continue. She said, why don't you try it now? Why don't you continue? Because if you're really passionate about it, go for it. I I started then, but uh, it was a big, big struggle back then to get into the industry because there was no one there to support an amateur DJ. 
uh, I didn't have any backup with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, neither did I have any experience of going out in the club or doing an event. I just had a couple of friends, people who I knew. They would be interested in hiring me or they would recommend me to somebody uh, knowing that he is just a beginner. He doesn't know anything about the music industry at all. But I would assume that's how it works. It works with everyone like that this. industry, right? I exactly. Mean- Not only for this industry, right? It would be applicable for all the industries that you speak about. So I got introduced to a few people. I started with my first gig. Now, there's an interesting story about the first gig that I did. It was a house party and it was in December. Okay. And I had got all my equipments and house, my speakers, my console, everything was there. And um, it was on 25th December. It was a Christmas party. And uh, that was my first gig. And I got the gig through someone and they promised me that they're going to pay an amount of 500 dirhams back in 2010-11. Um, okay, I'm very happy with it. First gig, let's do it. I went there at 5 in the afternoon to do my setup. I used to do all the setup by myself, carry all the speakers, connect the wires, get the system up and running, do the sound check and everything. And um, my wife was also excited about this. So she said, I'm going to join you. She came along with me. But she was there just sitting down and watching me do it. The host had given us the timing that 8 o'clock is when everybody would start walking in. 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. By 10, 30, 11, that's when people started walking in, right? Once everybody would settle down, the party started at about 12, 12, 30, 1 o'clock. And it went on till 4 o'clock in the morning. And in between that, they came and started requesting for songs which I had absolutely no clue about it. I had no clue what is soft rock. Back then, right? Because I'm a hardcore Bollywood DJ and I had absolutely no clue about soft rock. They wanted to listen to MLTR. They wanted to listen to all, all, all soft rock music, right? I would download the music and I would play. i download the music right then and there and I would play the request. That went on till 7 in the morning, right? It is December and it was one of the coldest winters. We uh, wind up everything. We went home. The, the next day I called the person who had hired me. And I asked him, like, how was it? Everything was okay. He said, yeah, yeah, fantastic. Everything was amazing. Um, When can I come to collect my payment? He said, you come tomorrow to my office. I'll give you the cash. When I went to collect cash from him, he hands me 200 dirhams. Wow. So I was like, surprised, like, so, but we had agreed for 500 dirhams. You're giving me only 200. You agreed to play all night for 500 dirhams. From 5 in the afternoon till 7 in the morning the next day. It is more than 12 hours. This is obviously when you were very, very fresh. Very fresh. The first gig of my career. What is the reason why you're giving me less amount? I said, no, that is the commission that I charge to refer you to somebody. So he gets... Um, more than 50%. Yeah, he gets more 300 than 50%. Dirhams. Exactly. Did you ever work with him again? Nope. <laughs> that was the first and the last one. <laughs> what brought your wife, Aditi, to that point of saying, you know, go out there and follow your passion, follow your dreams. And then... She's obviously not going to be with you every night when you're out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, na? So what is the impact of you not being at home? And, and how has Aditi been able to... Like, what is her process through all of this? How is she... Is she obviously happy? <coughs> She's happy with this. Right? That's why yeah. you're still able to do this. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But so what is her <clears throat> process? What's keeping her going? How it started was... I used to go out and I was really fascinated to play in clubs. Okay. And um, I wanted to do club gigs. But back then it was a struggle. I used to go out every day to meet people, to meet the promoters, to go to nightclubs, stand there, to get just a five minute time slot to speak to the promoter, to the owner and hand over my profile saying that I'm a DJ, I would be interested in doing a gig at your club. And that was, I think, almost for a year. She started getting worried about it, saying that you're not getting anything. You are just... Going there, you're wasting your time. Your health is getting affected because you're going to stay up all night till 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Again, you'll have to get up at 7 in the morning, go to office. And if something turns out, then it's good. But if nothing is happening, then you're wasting your time, your energy, your your health is suffering. That was the concern which she had at that point of time. It reached to a, such a level that, you know, we, 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 we have fought a lot of times. I was of the opinion that I've, I'm going to get a break one day. For sure. It is just about being patient. It is just about being consistent with it. And just being there out there, showing my face to people that I'm there. I want to do this. And it took me good three, two to three years to get that first break. But during that two to three years, we had so many issues. We fought. It was for the reason that uh, purely out of concern about me, 
about my health about my well being about uh, mental uh, well being as well right because if you are there out there every night you go and meet people you don't get a break you are disheartened and then you come back and then the process starts again the next weekend so purely out of concern she was worried and we used to have this argument it reached to us <laughs> uh, at, at a stage where um one day we had an argument i still left to the club i came home the doors were locked she didn't open the door for me <laughs> there was everyone at home like like my we we stayed in a joint family right so there was everybody my uncle aunt everybody was at home and they didn't open the door for me and i was sitting outside till 7 in the morning that's when they got up that's when they opened the door i went in i i changed i got ready and went to work directly so that has been one of the incident which happened and then um slowly i started getting break i i, I met people i uh, you know i was introduced to uh, people who uh, are the promoters who are owners of the clubs and then slowly i started getting break into club like one gig in 3 months or 4 months or 5 months the concerts started happening i was introduced to a very very dear friend of mine um a lot of people would know him he is uh, i would say that he is dj buddha's godfather right i wouldn't take the name because a lot of people will know him but whoever knows him will know that he is my godfather he has given me this break in this industry of uh, getting me into concerts getting me into Why events i want you take his name i would love to do that his uh, his name is rajesh leela ramani unfortunately he is no more uh, god bless his soul he was extremely close to me and uh, he was the one who gave break to dj buddha in this industry so you first uh, performed at one of his club nights no i performed for him at a concert, concert. so that was uh, the holy concert yes. uh, rangde yes. i think you have been there as well yes. right so that was the first one back in 2012 when um, thing with mika and yo yo that was the first one with honey singh yo yo yes. honey singh right yes. and uh, so he had messaged me saying that block your date you are you are there and i had absolutely no idea what scale of massive event is this going to be i he just blocked me saying that okay this date is final and then about a week before or two weeks before when i got the artwork it was yo yo honey saying dj buddha and there couple of other djs and i was like oh my god first ever gig first ever concert of my career and with honey singh this is interesting your your names obviously mihir yeah but from your first gig on you were already dj buddha so you It had figured your moniker out so that was again uh aditi's idea my wife's idea right i was of the opinion that i'm going to keep my name dj mihir right and she's going to nobody on this earth is going to call you for a gig if you keep your name dj mihir yeah it's very kyuki sas bhi kabhi bahuti exactly that is precisely the reason why i didn't want to do it right so we were brainstorming about the idea what name we could come in so my full name is mihir budbatti right and buddha is a part of my last name so like we were going to keep dj buddha so i was like okay let's 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 do it so it was her idea yeah she's quite uh, you know the the machine that uh, sort of makes a lot of stuff around you absolutely. move in tandem for things to fall in place right absolutely she is so this is how i'd like to put dj buddha is a front face the backbone the back support is absolutely 100% her fantastic everything everything from my clothes to the shoes that i wear to the glasses which i do uh to um you know designing my content on my social media my flyers writing scripts for my voice overs everything is by her that's everything. fantastic i'm so glad to hear you say that i feel like you won't be spending the night out of the house again not today <laughs> <laughs> tell me this now this um you know this period of time when there was obviously you guys were at loggerheads with each other because your you know career wasn't taking off as <clears> far as music uh, djing was concerned um but you still kept at it so yeah. so you had the initial uh, kick start that kickstart. your wife gave you and then yeah. you continued on yeah, yeah, yeah. uh yeah. pretty much on your own for some point uh, till some point and then the first gig kicked in and then gradually it built up from there she was right though there are concerns about health you know and and overall when you're when you're working yeah. all day <clears throat> and and also working all night how do you manage this so my 24 hours are literally divided into six aspects right six things six time zones right being uh, at at office being at work spending time with her spending time with my kids it's it's very very difficult it's very challenging 
uh normally i do not take up um uh, events on weekdays most right. of my events are on weekends randomly it happens very rarely it happens that i have a gig on a weekend weekday you just said you've done yeah. 22 22 gigs in yeah. november in november so november is one of those months yeah. where i've done events on weekdays as well yeah but that is because it's a peak season for us right the season normally is from october till march that's the six months ever in. say no to djing like okay enough i'm done <laughs> i don't need to do another one only uh to a point where i don't get paid enough for that right okay so that's your benchmark that's my benchmark because honestly if i have to up my standards it's me who who can do that i need to value myself i need to put myself up there for others to value that i'm going to ask you something very tough me here it's a tough question so i'm a mom as well and uh, i also do gigs in the evenings you know hosting events weddings all of that at in the nights and uh, i always find myself uh, feeling like i wish it wasn't so hard you know to have to choose between kids and work i wish i could be home with the kids do you not find that pining in yourself or you know that aditi is there and she's going to take care of it like what happens when the kids are not well you know is she able to manage on her own and i know you live in a joint family but you know still you, you're the husband and you're the father that one thing is always there at the back of the mind saying that when i'm out there my kids are at home i miss them a lot right they are very young my son is 9 years and my daughter is 5 years i miss them a lot while i am away for my gigs and everything but that one peace of mind which is there with me is that aditi is at home my wife is there to take care of them now it so happens that they might not be well at the same time my wife is not keeping well so that is a point of time where i say that no i'm not available for any gigs i need to be at home with my wife with my kids so if you've ever sort of uh, you know said no to a client and then they they had to figure last minute scramble find a dj or you have friends that you quickly recommend i wouldn't do it for the last minute normally uh, if if something comes up like uh, you can't predict when it, we're going to fall sick, right right exactly so sometimes it happens that i tend to go there for a short period of time and then i'll have a my replacement there right i try to uh, balance it out by being there with them during the weekdays i take them for their classes i take them for the tennis classes i take them for the piano classes for the dancing classes i go and attend every school functions which they have whether it be um parents day or the sports day or so anything your day job is flexible like that yes absolutely so that has been the biggest blessing for me hmm. my um work has been of equal support where uh, they value my passion a lot that's amazing and to a to an extent where everyone in my bank knows that i am a dj mm. about 4 years 4 years 5 five years back there was a campaign which was launched at a global level which was called be more so they were focusing on employees who did something more out of passion out of the uh, work life right somebody is a writer somebody is an olympic level athlete somebody is an actor from emia region middle east region the hr had nominated my name for that campaign without me knowing about it and out of 600 entries which came in globally mine was selected and they actually had a team of filmmakers flew from london to dubai they stayed with me for 3 days they uh, made a movie on me featuring uh, my day at work my day at home and one of my events and that entire movie was shared across the group globally reaching about close about half a million people and I got a one-on-one -on -one email from the CEO saying that we are very proud of you and keep up the good work. Your company deserves to be talked about for a minute here. Absolutely. We live in a culture of naming and shaming people all the time. I think your company <laughs> deserves to be named and put in the Hall of Fame here. Uh can we name them? No, unfortunately we can't name it. Uh because there are certain guidelines which I need to follow. So because of that I can't disclose the name. That's a tough one, no? But yeah, they good yeah. people, good folks, good work culture. Absolutely amazing. Like absolutely fantastic. All like right. Every manager of boss I've got in last 18 years, they have been super supportive of this passion that I follow. And couple of them they have even uh come to my events. So do you give them a corporate discount? Yes. it's on the house <laughs> nice always nice all right i'm i'm glad that i understood where your heart is as far as your kids are concerned you know your role as a husband is concerned you 
uh, obviously have a fantastic, super supportive uh, work community, which is why you're able to pull this off. At no point have you thought of just, you know, jumping onto one of the two boats or is that a long term thing? Is that ever going to happen or you're going to continue to do both? No, I'm going to continue doing both because for me, this are two separate things. DJing is pure passion and this is my profession. This is profession is what is my bread and butter. That's what pays my bills. I got into DJing, into music production, purely out of passion. I don't want to make it my profession because what happens is that when you take it up as a profession, you end up compromising on your quality, mm. on your pricing, on the output that I can give. Right? At this point of time, I can say that I DJ Buddha is not available for your event because this is my price point. If you can match it, I'm available for you. Or else you need to find somebody else. Or else they can go apply for a loan Absolutely. at your bank and then <clears> come <throat> and mom. then come and book you. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, tell me this. Um, you must have some, uh, some some crazy stories. You're a creature of the night. Uh, there must have been, uh, you know, some interesting events you've done or some random requests that you've had to entertain. Many. Yeah. Many of them. So typically a lot of private parties, um, people would book me and they would call me saying that this is our request. This is the kind of music we need to, uh, you know, we like to listen to. You want to listen to R&B, you want to listen to hip hop. And these are typically they see people, they see parties. 100%, 100% Indian, authentic, genuine Indian, right? And uh, we would like to listen to only English music, R&B, hip hop, and, you know, keep the vibe very mellow, uh, lounge music. Okay, done, you got it. So I start with it. We, we are into the night, three, four hours later on, one, the host would come and say, boss, Mary pant be sexy, Mary shirt be sexy. This is five minutes after the bar opens, I'm assuming. Not five minutes. I think about two hours after the <laughs> bar opens, <laughs> once the energy kicks in, hmm. once the uh, petrol kings in. So that's when they come and request for this. Nice. So and you have it ready? Content. Absolutely. Because you know this now. 100%. What was the first time that someone stumped you because they asked for something you did not have? I mean, you did mention the MLTR story. Was that the yeah. first time that, that happened? That or was the first one. That was the first one. I learned my lesson from there. And that's when I started building my uh, database. It's a huge, huge database. I would probably say you name an artist or you name a song, I would be having it. International, not just English, Hindi. Everything. 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 So you have to constantly educate and update yourself. Every single day. That's when it becomes more challenging, right? Who do you follow? Like, what is your Instagram, uh, you know, look like? Like, what, is, what are the people that come up on your Insta feed? Who do you follow? I follow a lot of people. As far as music is concerned, I'm a hardcore Bollywood DJ, right? right. I love Bollywood music. For me, genius, God-level music is A.R. Rahman. If somebody can fill in his shoes, it's Amit Trivedi. And I've been fortunate enough to work with both of them. I've opened the show for A.R. Rahman at uh, Expo. And uh, recently I performed with uh, Amit Rividi as well. So this kind of people are there in my list. These are the people who inspire me. What about internationally? Do you follow other DJs? A lot producers? of DJs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of them. A lot of them. So recently um, I've been into uh, a genre of music which is melodic techno, right? Uh, there are a lot of producers, there are a lot of DJs, uh, there's a particular DJ called uh, Band Bomber is there. Anima is there. A lot of other DJs are there, mm -hmm. which I follow on a regular basis. Nice. Yeah. As a Desi DJ, are you often uh, also going on the mic saying all the Punjabis in the house? That's every single day. What, what is with that? What is with the Punjabis in the house? I'm a Punjabi yeah. in the house. In the house. But um, very often the joke by non-Punjabis is what about us? Exactly. Hana? So that's one that's one standard line which every DJ has in their books, right? Yeah. What are some others? Do you uh, have some other standards? Yeah. Put your hands up in the air. Yes. Make some noise. Yes. Uh, you know, um, uh, if you know the song, sing along. So these are all things you've heard other DJs use. Other DJs use. And that's how you and learn. That's how I learn. And, and, and um, there are a lot of DJs, there are very, very senior DJs who like to make it more uh, informal on, on the console, on the mic. They would come up and say random things like chicken biryani adupar. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I've seen a lot of people doing that. Huh. And and have and, you tried uh, something like that? Uh, unfortunately, I haven't. No, why not? You I want try to try. I want yeah. to try it now. I should be doing that in the next one for sure. See if anyone puts their hands up. <laughs> exactly, 
Yeah. We don't even know what exactly. it means. Exactly. What is something that you have seen a DJ do and thought, "Ha, huh, I'll never do that." Being rude to your uh, audience. Being rude. You are at a club. The audience would come and request you for a song. They'll come and ask you for something. They'll ask and so I've seen a lot of people, you know, being rude with them, saying that no, this is not there. Please go away from here. So that is something which uh, I I think I'll never do in my life. That sounds very corporate of them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> What yeah. is this? You're the one that works in the bank. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So tell me this: Have you ever been to a party where you were invited as a guest, and then suddenly you were asked to also now go? Thoda sa. Can you just please thoda? You know? Thoda DJing. Huh. No, unfortunately, never it has happened. No so family far. has ever taken advantage of your skill. So far, no. What I so want your family. No. So far, no. That's amazing. What about <laughs> so far, friends? No. friends yes i i would say yes but uh, that's more of you know are yaar ek do gana suggest karna please kya bajaye next ha ha so that kind of stuff not not actually going on the console and djing for them have you ever gotten so bored at the party because the dj was so bad that you said let me take over no i haven't so honestly speaking i do not go out to party at all ah like that's that that's a, a sharp contrast to what an image you would have for a dj Right, a DJ is somebody who is cool, who is there out there partying every day, uh, you know, uh, being with who's who of the industry, uh, going to clubs and all these things. I have not been. Um, I do not go out for partying. Whenever I have time, when I am not at an event, I spend that time with my family. So I have never been to a party where somebody else has been playing, uh, and I had to go and you know just get bored there. It has never happened. What's one Bollywood song that is your anthem that you know it's gonna make that party come alive? You keep it. It's it's like an ace up your sleeve. कोई कहे कोई कहे from दिल चाहता है from दिल चाहता है ooh of recently I've been noticing this trend of '90s music coming back. Yes, right. People are very uh, even you know, on radio in a big exactly, way. Exactly. Yeah. In a big way, right? So, and I've been always a fan of '90s music. So I I think the '90s music is something which people relate to. Uh, they'll be able to sing along. They know the lyrics by heart. They know the hook steps for that songs. So that's when that ace comes up, saying that you know the next track I'm going to play, I want to see everyone's hands up in the air and jump with me. And the 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 track kicks in, and I see people going mad. Now I know that you're also involved in uh, remixing. a brand new single that just dropped uh, here in dubai yep. which is mariam's jogan yep. yep do you want to tell us about that so uh i've been a part of uh, the blue chip uh, music label uh since the first song they've launched uh, i did the remake of uh, i love dubai 2.0 as well and now jogan i've been working on um it's one of my hot hot favorite tracks uh, mariam has done a fantastic job yes. on the vocals The video has come out to be amazing. Um, Suraj Jumani has directed it. He is the one-man show for Blue Music, and um, I think the mix is going to. I hope the mix does equal justice to the original one. So it's still under process. I am making it because of my um, gigs and a lot of events that I've been. I I didn't have enough time to sit on it and work on it at a stretch. What is the launch date for this? I guess it's going to be after a week. After a week from today, from today, maybe. so by the time we've we've put this out, it'll be out almost, yeah. Because we're putting this out just before New Year's. Yep, yep. I think that should be there. Yeah. Well, speaking of New Year's, uh, how how does this work? It is the biggest night. Of, I'm assuming yeah, it's absolutely. the biggest night of the year. Absolutely. Yeah. The most money comes in. Hundred percent. New Year's Eve, right? Hundred percent. How many gigs do you do in one night? New Year's only one. Only one. Only one. Other nights you will take on more than one. I would yeah. Yeah, but New Year's <clears throat> what is the scope for earning for a DJ here in Dubai? The scope of earning there is no limit to earning. There must be some limit. There is nothing absolutely. A in Dubai there the is palm. no upper limit. Really? There is absolutely no upper limit for a DJ. You can ask for 50,000, you can ask for 100,000. Are you if kidding with, me? If you are there with the right person at the right place, You will get it. Ah, Absolutely. Where do you find these right people? <laughs> that's what I'm still searching. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's crazy. That's yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's it's, insane. It's, it is. It is. It is. Dubai is the party capital of the Middle East, right? People from across GCC or other parts they come to Dubai for absolutely. New Year's, right? Absolutely. So this is one place where people would come and spend their money on New Year's. So they don't mind paying uh, a DJ that amount. So where is a venue that you definitely want to be? 
playing at lot of venues uh, are there in dubai a uh, lot of clubs are there in dubai concerts are there in dubai i'd love to play at uh, coco cola arena for new years that's one of them globally is there a place where you see yourself like it'll be a big feather in your hat i don't have that big ambition yet yeah. but uh, uh, playing at uh, at a world stage uh, i think dubai is a place where the whole world is here right this is this is it yeah when i had the chance to play at uh, the expo 2020 at the jubilee stage opening for ar rahman um, there were 25000 people there yeah so that was the moment for me yeah the entire world is coming to dubai my place is dubai this yeah. is where i want to be yeah as simple as that fantastic for a dj who's just starting out all right what is a life lesson that you can impart right now three things i would say mm. number one is uh be patient number 2 is be consistent with your music with your practice with approach towards uh different genres of music the third thing would be there is no shortcut to hard work so if you want to be successful if you want to be there if you want to be there you have to put in that hard work in your career in yourself in your music because that is what what is going to set you apart from the remaining people how many uh, hours do you sleep 4 hours That's it you sleep 4 hours in a day? 4 to 4 to 5 hours. And yeah. that's enough for you? That's enough. More than enough for me. Have you ever felt really sleepy <laughs> at a gig or just after a gig? Not at a gig. So so huh. that is something which which um which really fascinates me is that no matter what how tired I am, no matter how sleepy I am, the moment I am on that stage, the moment I'm on that console, yeah. everything just vanishes. You're switched on. I'm switched on. the full energy is back there have been lot of instances where i've been down with fever bad cold sore throat gulp down to panadols and i've been there at the console i've been there for 5 hours without a problem yeah but that's not the smartest thing me that's not the smartest thing i yeah. agree but that that's what uh, passion and music is for me hmm. so that's what keeps me going but uh, have you ever taken to panadols and showed up to be a banker at work Like no, <laughs> that's not required there. That's not required there. Not required at the bank. It's not required. <laughs> Great, good yeah. stuff, Mihir. You know, I, I wish you all all the best. I mean, I think it's almost insane. You know, the life you've been leading. It's crazy, and I I think what's what I love best about you is that you're such a nice guy. You're such a down to earth, simple, normal guy. You know, I meet you at events like I'm meeting you in. in my house only you 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 are absolutely you have no airs about it you're not so cool that you can't be approached and DJs are typically the coolest people in the room that's a perspective of people about DJs right mm. <clears throat> they're going to be they're all funky they're cool with their spiked hairs and all these things but, but because that that variety exists that that does exist right so that has been the uh, typical image of stereotype image i would say for for DJs but there are yes people like me who don't like to be that cool dj mihir dj mihir i don't want to be that dj mihir absolutely no kyuki saas me kabhi bahut hi yes wishing you all the best man thank you so much thank you and thank you. you you know what this is the i think one of the reasons that you found the success that you have is of course your wife the support from your company um and i think it's what you carry inside of you mihir it's it's what you take everywhere you go which is um you are um, you have an infectious amount of hope in yourself that things are going to work out absolutely you know absolutely. so when you bring that to anything you do uh, things ultimately have no option but to work out now absolutely. for you there, there is a there is a dialogue by uh, shahrukh khan right jab uh, aap uh, kisi cheez ko paane ki jaane ki koshish karo to puri kainat use aap se milane ki saazish karti hai so that's what that's what it is right so things which i've been really passionate about it just there i dream about it i i live with it i eat it everything that's my passion that's my music for me i dream it i sleep with it i eat with it there as simple go. as that there you go this is what it takes to be one of dubai's busiest dj's thank you for making thank yourself you. available for the show and i know you've got a busy busy new years eve coming up um are you going to be taking a break anytime soon to spend some time with the kids yes absolutely in fact uh, um next week i am off from my work so that's when uh, i'm going to be spending my time with the kids for a week and um, in december during the holidays the the christmas holidays i'm going to be taking some time off and one final question now uh, dj budha this one's coming in from my uh, tamilian husband <laughs> who wants to know if there are Tam- tamil song requests as well or is it only about punjabi music at parties in dubai tamil songs 
Malayalam songs, Telugu songs, uh, Pashtu songs, uh, Tagalog, Persian. All this is what I have in my collection. And and Dubai is requesting for songs in all these Every, languages. All these languages. What is the most popular Tamil song of late? I think the the, the recent one, which is from the movie Jailer, it's Kovala. I guess that's that that's what the name Listen, of the song my is. My husband and I now now because you've mentioned Jailer, we have to go and watch Jailer. He has to take me out for that. The great movie. Rajni. Rajni, right? We yeah, need to have absolutely. that. Absolutely, Thank you. And this has been really, really. I think it's been a nice sort of glimpse into what goes into becoming a DJ and sustaining. Yeah, what eleven yeah. years? Thirteen years. Thirteen years of being a DJ, and you've done phenomenally well. Big love to Aditi and the kids. Thank you so much for having me. This is really, really amazing, and this is, as I told you, this is one of my first podcasts that I've done ever in my life. and it was outstanding Aww. thank you for having me i'm glad you enjoyed it thanks for coming in mehir thank you dj buddha <laughs> there you go that's the man and that is how the job's done if you've got any questions for dj buddha feel free to post them in the comments below and we'll make sure to uh, bring them to dj buddha and bring the answers to you right here on hey karish with you. that it's a wrap on uh, well what would be our last episode of 2023 we're going to see you in the new year right here with another guest another episode of hey karish take care of yourselves and we'll see you hey guys what's up this is me dj buddha on hey karish Don't forget to like, share and subscribe so we can get the party started.